Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for joining us here today for the viewing of PS Dance. My name is Nell Shelby and I have the pleasure of directing this film. I wanted to pop in here to just tell you a few things. First of all, I want the film to speak for itself, but I also wanted to invite you to a very special talk back after this film with some very distinguished panelists. Um, specifically, our executive producer, Jody Gottfried Arnhold, who is a dance educator and advocate. And then I'll introduce um, the panelists to you after the film, but please stick around. And I also wanted to remind you that you can comment on Facebook during the film. You can ask us questions, feel free to engage with other people. Maybe if there's other people that you see on Facebook um, that are watching this film, you all can chat with each other. Uh, myself and Anna Fragoso, who is the Director of Dance at the Department of Education, will be responding to your comments. So I look forward to um, taking your questions after the film and enjoy, sit back, relax, and this is P.S. Dance. Welcome to our celebration of dance. I'm Paula Zahn. It's our pleasure to share with you the importance of dance in our New York City public schools. We are all born to move. Movement unlocks the body and heightens the spirit. When we talk about arts in our schools, we usually think of listening to music, learning about major composers, or how to sing or play an instrument. Or we think of the visual arts, like painting, photography, or drawing. Each of these has had a long history in public education, but it is rare for schools to have a dance program. Dance is only taught in a fraction of schools nationally, but here in New York City, a growing number of schools are offering dance as a distinct course of study, the way the other arts are taught, as a vital and nuanced form of human expression. Many people may think of dance as just steps. The formal study of traditional ballet or the stylized movements of contemporary dance. Dance education is more than that. This is dance for everybody. It's a tool for transformation because dance touches every part of the child body, mind, and heart. So for me, I'm more kinesthetic learner. So I know if it would save my life, it would save so many others. In this program, we're going to share some of these students' stories. From elementary to high school, you'll see how they've been challenged, motivated, and moved by dance. It's rotating. And then it has a pattern. Travel, spin. Travel, spin. Catherine Gallant teaches pre-kindergarten through fifth grade at PS89 in Battery Park City. She's a choreographer and is also an expert in the work of Isadora Duncan, the modern dance pioneer, and has been performing her dances for more than 25 years.
Well, I've been here at PS89 for 16 years. Our principal had the vision as she was building the idea for this school of equity, of serving all kinds of learners. From the first minute I started planning, I wanted to have a very strong arts program here. I'm a very big believer that there is not one way to excel at anything or not one way to be smart. And I really felt that for children, I wanted them to have a very well-balanced life in school, not just about, you know, academics, but also about being a good citizen, being a good classmate. If you have a child who's this sort of dark horse in the room, you know, who's struggling in other areas, we often find that in the visual arts or with music or with dance, for some kids, it really is the place that they shine. I love that you can make all sorts of moves that you want, and you can let your energy out just by dancing. It's all about like imagination, connection, and I love that we get to be free. It helps you with your emotions and reactions. It makes me feel happy. I love it. Well, I think all children have a large appetite for movement. I might see crawling creatures at the bottom of the ocean. I might see seaweed. In the past few years, the time that children spend in front of screens has exponentially risen. And so the need just for unstructured play is very great. It's like having recess. But instead of having recess, we have dance. We need also the opportunity to move and use that as a way to learn in other subject areas to bring it all together through movement. We can keep on going and studying new units and trying out things like Remy Charlip or Harriet Tubman. We are learning that she traveled a lot so she could get away from like the wartime and go under to escape and we're doing this little dance that's really fun. We had to walk across a rickety bridge, slither across a wall, run around a field, hide behind trees, go across stepping stones, um, row yourself in onto land, and then we had to find a safe house. Our concept was grounded in history, and we're trying to make that connection embodying an actual historical time frame, an event, a person. And what does that mean for the body? How do we participate in that? So most of my work is framed by the Laban movement analysis, where we're thinking about the elements of movement, space, time, the relationships we have between our, our own body, with other people in the dance space, with the space itself. The lions are just waking up. The sun is rising in the jungle. Pick up your big lion head. Good. And arch your back up to the ceiling. And check out your claws. Scratch your fleas. And slowly stand up. Oh, look, there's a big crown. Pick up that big crown and put it on your head because lions are the kings and queens of the jungle. If you're respecting your own space and that of others, it starts to move into the larger aspects of what it means to respect difference, to respect the rate at which people learn. Can you tiptoe back to your bubble spot and surprise it when you get there? In the second grade, we're still talking about a space bubble because so many kids don't have a basic body awareness of how their movement affects other people, how it affects themselves, how their movement affects their focus and attention. So I build that from pre-K. So we're moving our body, but we're also listening, we're also thinking, and we're also trying to create something. She really understands how to scaffold the concepts of dance and what's appropriate for a four-year-old versus an eight-year-old versus a 10-year-old. And she sort of knows how to build on the skills that they've already learned. So having her here all these years and having her work with all of the grades is a huge advantage.
because I see children from the time they're four years old to 10 years old, I see tremendous change. I've seen children move from being these sort of very shy, reticent kids into children who are more comfortable and at ease. It also helps some kids who have a hard time with impulse control. It's really about focus and attention, sustaining it a little bit more. Then take a breath. <sighs> Close your eyes and touch your brain and imagine how you're going to be listening to my directions. You're going to be putting your eyes on me. Your body's going to be steady. Now open your eyes and touch your body and make sure it's calm. Also, the ability to articulate what you're seeing and feeling. Observation, being able to use descriptive language. What's another word for traveling? Locomotion. For me, the biggest joy is seeing the confidence in kids, especially with boys. I will say that there are boys who have grown incredibly confident with their ability to do something that might initially seem uncomfortable. There's like different things in dance you need to know, but once you learn them and, and get used to them, you might like them. And we talk a lot about what it means to assert your verticality, both physically, it means that you feel your own strength, but then you show that confidence and strength in the world. My main approach to any unit or any lesson is to create an organized atmosphere. It's a ritualized activity, so they know already before they come in. The expectation is they're gonna enter, they'll take their shoes off. So all of that is taken care of, so we don't waste a moment. dance, visual arts, and music. They are part of the curriculum. We're called enrichment, but really we act as core, connecting to other academic areas, and it really is supported by the administration. I feel very bad when the schools are forced to end the arts, or they have a leader who doesn't think that you know it's as important as the other things, because I think when you don't give kids that kind of well-rounded education, you are really robbing them of something incredibly important. And I would want my child to have that kind of well-rounded, you know, education in terms of what they're, they're exposed to in their life. When you place a dance teacher in a school, that educator becomes part of the fabric of the school. And the art form of dance is established as a respected subject area. A dance teacher on staff will see the students from year to year and can develop a sequential program. Anna Neri Fragoso teaches at PS315 in Midwood, Brooklyn. She came from the Canary Islands in Spain to the United States to study with the Nikolai Lewis Dance Theater, and she became intensely interested in teaching. What we do here is laboratory for them to experiment, to improvise, to discover. And my dance program is very pluralistic in a way that I think that every child can find something that they like, that they feel comfortable with, to open it up to, to who they are. I love making new friends, creating my own dance. And we get to choreograph our dances and we get to put a lot of movements we like in it. Anna has a sequential program for kindergarten through fifth grade, and she focuses some of her teaching on the work of great dance makers. Her students are introduced to their styles and then make their own dances inspired by those choreographers. Yeah. 
Children learn through their bodies, since they're babies. We all learn through our bodies, and then we lose it if we don't cultivate it, if we don't develop it. And the dance specialist's job is to make sure that that tool, the tool of the body to use for learning, gets more and more sophisticated every year. Feel each other, move when everybody moves. Dance is social in nature. You know, you can do solos, but most of the time we dance together, we dance with other people. We work a lot on how to work with each other, how to talk to each other, how to give positive comments to each other, how to phrase suggestions in a way that help each other. What did you see that you really liked? Yes. I noticed that Kayla and Aaliyah's um, balance was stunning because they didn't fall. It was just um, still like a statue. Something that they still need to work on. Yes. I think they need to add more movement and shapes into it. I found it was a little too short. Too short, okay? Because they were doing such a good job, right? You could see the potential of a longer dance. Anna is a highly skilled teacher who nurtures an environment of safety and freedom in her classroom. The children in her class feel like they can express themselves without fear of any negative response from either teachers or fellow students. I like how every single kid supports our dances and they give us feedback on how to make it more perfect. And I like how they give us a compliment about our dance. And I like their dances, too. It makes me feel good because I get to know that people would help me and try to give me a lot of feedback to help our dance. It helps me feel great because when I mess things up and feel my friends help me, then my dance becomes more outstanding. All that collaboration work translates in the work that they do upstairs in their classrooms. And many times the teachers actually share that with me. Well, dance fits into my day because it makes my whole day happier and happier because I love dance. In New York City, we are so spoiled, we are so very lucky because we are at the center of this amazing dance world. And I think it's part of the role of the dance teacher to bring all of that into the school. This year we did some creating stories through movement with the kindergartens, with Dance Wave, and we also did um, Ivory Coast African dances with the first graders. We had the New York City Ballet with the fourth graders. Fifth graders did Dancing Classrooms, that's a ballroom dance program, um, which is very, very successful with the fifth graders. They learn how to dance with each other in a respectful manner. Sometimes we had the Chinese Cultural Center doing things with the third graders, since that's one of the social studies themes for that grade, or jazz or tap dancing. These are all residencies that complement what I already do with them in the dance studio. Dance education in schools should be educating students in dance, through dance, and about dance. New York City Ballet was actually the best ballet that I ever participated in because my group subject was the end of slavery and we really had fun practicing the dance. We took social studies as our subject about the Civil War and many people did the Underground Railroad, Slavery, Union, Confederacy, and we performed it to the whole school. At first, I thought ballet was for girls, but then I realized that it is also for boys too. The Hip Hip Dance Company is an after-school program, and basically what it is is a group of fourth and fifth graders, and we create choreography together. That's a performing group, so they get to perform here at the holiday show, or we just finish a performance at the Brooklyn Museum, or the New York City Dance Festival. I like performing in front of everybody because I like everybody seeing what I could do. The way I choose the members is not really by looking at their technique or how well they're dancing, but I look at how they work together, um, if they are a good fit for the dynamics of the group. 
helps me a lot because I get to listen to what other people think about my dance and then I could give my opinion if I disagree or agree. The most thing I like about it is the agrees and the disagrees because looking at other people's conflict makes me think about what they're saying. I try out the other people's idea. Collaboration, cooperation, respectfulness, being able to listen to each other's ideas and being positive about it. Even listening to other suggestions from other people and then accept them and then go back to your work and revise your work. It's such a authentic process in dance. That's how artists in dance work. And for me to see that process reflected in my students is a treat, is my dream come true. Parents, educators, and researchers have often asked whether dance and the other arts help children in their academic subjects. It's difficult to make a definite connection. What we do know, though, is that the deep benefits of studying dance go well beyond any kind of direct connection to academic performance. These are benefits that boost self-confidence, self-esteem, and a sense of identity, and help children navigate the world as adults. Michael Kerr is a middle school dance teacher at New Voices School of Academic and Creative Arts in Brooklyn. He's been teaching for more than 20 years. He also happens to be a professional dancer who has danced with numerous dance companies. He himself began performing as a child in Brooklyn. He now teaches children from sixth through eighth grade. These are students who have to audition to be accepted into his class. I see my seventh graders uh, four times a week for double periods, and my eighth graders three times a week for double periods, which is really extraordinary for, for New York City public schools. So I'm very grateful that uh, over time, there was a recognition that the students needed, you know, as much dance time and music and theater time as humanities and math and science and, and, and the academic subjects. And so the sixth graders, when they come in, they kind of get an introduction to the dance program, and that program is basically designed just to provide students with an understanding of what dance is and to kind of move those students who've never had a dance experience before to maybe discover that they can dance and that they can create dance and if nothing else have a heightened appreciation for dance as an aesthetic art form. We're learning how to perform on the stage and we're learning how to be professional and we're also learning different movements of dance that we would never learn, like, outside of school. I think we all know just how challenging the middle school years can be in a student's life. Michael fosters an atmosphere of acceptance in his classroom so students feel safe in improvising and expressing themselves in front of their peers. There are no mistakes in Michael's classroom, just opportunities to learn. I want this exploration to happen in a way where it's unplanned, it's uncued. You dancers are working off of each other's energy in the room. The one thing I, I absolutely recognize happening in my instructional place year after year is that my students are coming in and learning to interact socially with each other because of dance, because of the way that I have them working in groups and coming together as a whole class. They seem to become somewhat humanized in, in a way that they learn to respect each other through dance making. I think dance just lends itself as a very, very powerful art form instructionally to help people, not just kids, just break down the barriers. He likes to sneak a lesson in, and so he doesn't tell you, like in academics, we're going to learn about history today. No, he kind of gives us this little thing, and we get to learn it ourselves, so it's kind of natural, and it's, it's a really smart way to learn. How has your thinking started to change? 
students and I have created a work around the whole idea of bullying. Well, one day he just came in and he was like, I'm not going to tolerate bullying anymore and we have to make a dance that's going to make bullies feel really bad about what they're doing. And so after that, before choreographing it, he like made us get into character. At the beginning of the year and like throughout like the middle of the year, there was some bullying in, in like this classroom yeah. right here and he was like disgusted and shocked. And it must have been like an overnight thing because like I noticed that we're all like closer. Like we're family that never met before and like we're, we're we've become so close with each other and we it's have. like, we need each other. We're purposely using our talent to show our audience in the world this horrible thing that's happening and that's not okay. The one impact specifically that we're all doing as dance educators, those of us who are working with, you know, heterogeneous classes of students, both you know, males and females in class, is that we're broadening the idea of who dances and who doesn't in our society. It's an outlet for many people. And like, it's, it's not just an art, it's like a state of mind. It's like a part of our lives and we don't know what to do without it. It's like something you thrive on. And it's not just people moving around. It's something that is it's there. It's a story, it is. It should change the perspective on the world. Dance is for everyone. It's not just for those who want to become dancers. And that is a revelation many times for my own students. I tell them, no, you're studying dance because you're studying dance the way that you're studying math or science. Not everybody who studies science is gonna become a scientist. You know, when people ask, why does dance belong in you know, K through 12, well, why not? In 2004, there were 135 dance teachers in the New York City public schools. After a major push to expand the reach of dance education, there are now close to 400 dance teachers in place. So we're moving in the right direction, but with 1,800 public schools in New York City, there's still a lot of work ahead to reach all of our children. Ani Yudovichki teaches at Frank Sinatra School of the Arts. Ani was a professional dancer and danced for many years with Ohad Naharin and dancers and the New York Baroque Dance Company. The school is not a traditional public high school. It is a pre-conservatory style art school that also offers very strong academic programs. The admissions process requires an audition and only a select group of students are chosen from many applications. As a dancer growing up, like that was something that gave me confidence and I figured that I wanted to pursue that continuing through my high school years. Ani teaches a program that focuses on dance history and technique. She introduces her students to the work of Merce Cunningham and Jose Limon, among others. Students learn how they can be part of that lineage. Like ballet is a core foundation here, and especially with Miss Yu graduating from Juilliard, it's just like, Juilliard has a ballet foundation also, so she's gonna bring that ballet foundation to us. It's an anatomically safe way to turn a body into an instrument. You can't get into anywhere without ballet. Modern, we focused a lot on improvisation and connecting to our body. You know, the classes with Gaga that we had really helped me regulate my breathing in a way that I hadn't really understood before. Gaga is very different from most other forms of dance. Dancing with this sort of intimacy with yourself, but having the freedom to express, you know, your inner thoughts and movements in a way that you weren't able to before. The master classes and workshops that Ms. Yu has brought in have really widened our spectrum on dance. We did kinesiology and anatomy, which not only helped me understand my body so much more in dance, but it helped me in my other classes like bio. It's wider than dance. We, we have the luxury often to explore subjects in depth saying, well, we saw Alvin Ailey revelations, we say it's a classic, but then we spent maybe two months 
researching what does it mean, a classic, an art? Where does the word come from? What does it mean in architecture and literature and dance? Using your torso. Dance itself, it gives you like a structure. You're able to remember steps that you never thought you could remember. And the thing is like in public school, like I had that in my public school. And when they brought it to me, it was, it was amazing because we realized, okay, she can do that, I didn't know she could do that. I didn't know he could do that, I didn't know he could dance. And it's just like, you see, you see the confidence come out in a lot of these younger kids. I think the arts are good for any growing person. First, it targets the imagination. No matter what you want to do in life, to have imagination helps to imagine something that isn't here, whether you're the future Einstein or Ratmansky choreographer, you have to be able to imagine what doesn't exist. I never thought that I could get on a stage in front of thousands of people and do jumps and leaps. To finally have something in me that I can share with other people, it makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel confident in who I am. Like, usually, like, I never liked my body. I would just never put on these hard and tights, like, and it really like shaped the way I dress myself now. It shaped my opinion on other people and it shaped the way like I present myself. Cunningham said, after a dance class, every student should feel like they danced. Sometimes we forget and you get into combinations and trying to get things right and to improve and what isn't working. How about just the joy of dancing. There's really no greater joy in life for me than dancing. I, I mean, people, people ask me why I dance. It's like asking me why I breathe. To be able to do it, make a career out of it, be professional, that would be the best thing ever. Some of her students are going to go on to formal training in a conservatory or in a dance major program in college. Others take the rigor of this program into other areas of study in college. It's really extraordinary how the students get an understanding that dance is a continually developing art form, that it has had cultural births and subsequent cultural modifications as it has passed through different countries, that history and the modes of theatrical presentation through history have had an effect on the development of dance and that they are part of that lineage and are dance's future. <laughs> In 2004, the New York City Department of Education created a new set of arts education standards for our students. The standards are called the Blueprint for Teaching and Learning in the Arts and are created for dance, music, theater, and visual arts. These blueprints have five common strands of learning. They include arts making, arts literacy, making connections in the arts, community and cultural resources, and careers and lifelong learning. It's a structure to work within. It serves as a framework for what you're doing. I mean, there really isn't anything ever that I'm doing with my students that I can't immediately recognize and identify in one of the five strands. I think in our high stakes test driven world, parents also get another level of confidence when they know that there are standards that we're working toward. Dance making leads them to teach dance technique, improvisation, and choreography skills so that students can create their own dances and performances. The dance literacy that they instill in their students helps them to analyze, critique, and evaluate dances. The Making Connections strand helps students to find historical, social, and cultural connections in the dances that they see. Community and cultural resources leads our dance teachers to partnerships with cultural institutions and guest artists. And Careers in Lifelong Learning teaches students how many careers there are in the dance field, not just as dancers and choreographers, but as lighting designers, company managers, development directors, 
and publicity directors. It's kind of a check and balance for me. I'll share it with students and we'll say, hey, we do that. We understand basic locomotor patterns. We can dance with a partner. We can create our own movement phrases that have a beginning, middle, and end. So the blueprint itself gives us a language. It gives us the direction. It also helps us to be very structured, but still very flexible. And so they understand that someone outside of their school has this idea of what students are supposed to know, understand, and be able to do. That they're part of a larger dance learning community. Patricia Dye teaches at Science Skill Center High School for Science, Technology, and the Creative Arts in downtown Brooklyn. Pat has assisted and danced for Baba Dr. Chuck Davis's Dance Africa at the Brooklyn Academy of Music. She has a deep background in many forms of dance, but especially African dance. Well, Michael J. Johnson is the one who said, I want this to be a creative arts school. I want the kids to learn that they don't have to only do sports, but the arts are important. The science, technology, and academics flourished because every child belonged to a club. Every child had something to do. Every child felt at home and connected to someone or some department. My first time dancing was when I came to the school, actually. You know, I was shy, nervous. I didn't really like it that much. I wanted to transfer, but then I thought, might as well give it a chance. What I love about dancing is like a stress reliever. It just takes away the stress. And when you come in the dance room, no matter who you are, what you are, there's no differences. You're just all like one big family in here. During a stressful day of academic learning and stuff, dance it just, it boosts you up at the end of the day. And it just, it gives you something to look forward to. It's not only She's working with them to develop the different dance moves, but she also focused on their emotional, social, and academic development because she collaborates with other teachers in the school. Cranium, clavicle, scapula, sternum, ribs, humerus, radius, ulnar, vertebrae column, vertebra column, pelvis, sacrum, We do many different cultures of dance, like we did thriller, salsa, hip hop, boot dance, and swing. And every time we did the dance, we wouldn't just do the dance straight out. We would take the time to understand its culture, its background, where it came from, so we could really understand why we're doing this dance and how it's meant to be done. see students dancing. They all have a portfolio. They have to do writing every day. They do essays for her. They have um, texts that they have to read and analyze. Each dance class at Science Skills Center High School is limited to just one 45-minute session a week. She packs a lot into that rigorous session. I've been doing indicators of arts learning that students would be expected to achieve sequential program, year-to-year -year arts instruction. By putting them in the middle of learning and actually building their own requirements, their handbook, the rules and regs, it made them feel like they had a part in the decision-making. What I like about the blueprint and Common Core, not only that we can use it in dance in the class, we can use it for outside, in our own lives, to help us structure and time organize and manage ourselves. Because of the structure that she has in her dance studio with the kids, it transpired to the other classes as well. We want to develop the right side of the brain, which is the art in you, the drama, part of life's experiences you'll be able to handle, yes? And then put all of the other wonderful academic part of the brain together. 
left and right, makes a whole person. In order to present the student with an holistic education, you really need to combine the arts with the math and the science. Dance is a really integral part of what we do here. The students also have an opportunity to participate in an after-school dance company and they run the show. They have to earn their positions. They have an artistic director, an assistant artistic director, costume director, assistant costume director, development director, and publicity director. They learn a lot from all those different roles they take on. I started off as a company member. I worked my way up to the board of directors, being an assistant studio and stage manager and assistant dance captain. And in 2011, I became our assistant director. They come with a similar style. I can run any department. I can run any meeting. I can work. It's like this was their first job. When our students leave here, they could pretty much run their own dance program because of the training that they have had. Jal Bailar Dance Company started in 1996. It's more than a dance company, it's a family, it's a way of life. So we have sisters and brothers from 1996 that still come back to support this dance company. It's amazing when you see the alumni come back and the previous students the year before and then the current students like, wow, he's in college, I can do what he does. It helps in a way to give you something to always come home to and always get back to. The alumni are here because the alumni before them were here. I graduated 2005. I was dance captain and treasurer. Currently, I go to Stony Brook University pursuing a PhD applied math and statistics. <laughs> Have about three, four more years, but even so, I still make sure to find the time to give back because without Ms. Dai and Joe Bailar, I wouldn't be here and with the direction and everything. So I'm forever indebted and grateful for that. Reach out to Ms. Dai, reach out to me, get my information. I'm a resource for you. Longevity is important. This is something that you can put in your resume to market yourself, to make yourself look more well-rounded rather than just someone who can excel in the books. You can do something else. You can manage, you can show leadership. And that's important to employers and funding resources. Here's a group of kids in the so-called ghetto you know, who are making it, and making it in the arts. And the alumni come back, and that's, and that's very important, because once you graduate, once you do your thing, you should go, go back to your communities and make some sort of a difference. I'm not sure if I want to professionally continue dancing, but I will always dance. For the rest of my life, I will always dance. It keeps me active, it keeps me alive, it keeps me flowing. You can see all of their learning come together on stage. Their physical ability, their collaboration, discipline, and creativity. Students treating each other with respect and working together to achieve a common goal. Over the past 10 years, the Department of Education's Arts Office has brought together teachers for many professional development sessions. In the field of dance, teachers have been given 75 days of this special training. During these workshops, dance teachers learn from and share with their peers. The workshops are often conducted in partnership with professional dance companies. The teachers brainstorm through their guided discussions and map out just how to apply those lessons to their own classrooms.
just a wonderful opportunity for all the dance teachers in the city to, to come together and to talk about teaching and we get to spend the day dancing and choreographing with each other, on each other. It's probably one of the only days that we ever get to be with other dance teachers. We get to communicate a lot with our peers, share thoughts, keep our community strong and also practice what we preach. Find new ideas and also to build a, a kind of mentoring, mentorship program with new dance teachers and the veterans. Our goals for today are to explore social studies themes as entry points for choreography, connect us to relevant social issues and to students' experiences, share successful strategies to promote student achievement in original dance composition, and to discuss ways for building strong community around dance. All dance teachers, we have our uh, background training. We, we have a very specific way of teaching, and when we come to the professional developments, we learn new techniques, new strategies. Uh, we learn from different dance companies here in New York City. New York City is such an amazing place with so many dance resources. And these professional developments bring those resources to us. So then we can bring them back into our schools. The importance of professional development is for teachers to come together with a master teacher and have an experience that they, first of all, for themselves, feel themselves as artists. They have to teach every day so they miss out on their own creative process. So I wanted to give them an opportunity to be in tune with that again. I wanted to give them a chance to remember what it felt like to be a dancer. As people who are responsible for teaching, right, it is our role, our goal, to be the example. So as we step in front of them to tell them, I need you to do, I need you to do, I need you to do, I need you to become, they need to see it first. Does that make sense? So here is your space. Here is your space to mess up, to find freedom, to find the glory of yourself as being a dancer. What is that? In this class setting, how do you refocus yourself? How do you move past your own fears? How do you move past your doubts? How do you, you know, get all of your nervous energy and place it in a space where you have control again? Right? If you can be the example of that, then you'll find better ways on how to teach it. It's really about experiencing. When I'm here and I'm dancing, I'm moving through a new combination or a new dance that I'm learning. I'm always thinking about how my students might feel doing something similar and if it really would work for them as well or which age group this would be good for. I often talk about it with kids after a professional development with teachers and if I'm a facilitator I might say to them you know I just talked about you with uh, 200 elementary school teachers. I was teaching them. That's always very impressive to them. So I definitely take that back to kind of connect the worlds of the students in a classroom to their teachers being students is very powerful. I teach my students exactly what I did today and we do it throughout the next week and a half and build on it. So our kids love when I go to PD because professional development for me is really professional development for them. I definitely sense that there is a huge trust among dance teachers now. It's a little hard to talk with an academic teacher about what, what we do in our school. I mean, we all have friends at, at work, but it's a little bit easier when you're with other dance teachers, and um, I think everyone looks forward to this. We have connected the first steps a child takes in dance in kindergarten with what happens on the biggest stages in New York City. Do we know that children who have a wonderful dance program in their school are feeling better about themselves as people, as students, and as learners? Absolutely. 
I would like to see more administrators understanding the value of dance in the public education. Hopefully in time we'll have dance in every New York City public school and maybe in every K through 12 school district across the country. The arts, we definitely need more, more of it. I wish I had another studio and I wish I had another dance teacher, you know, so that the entire school could be taking a dance class each semester. Some of the students, when I see them on the street and they come to visit, I know they're dancing, they're still dancing somehow. They're not doing it professionally, but it, dance is part of their life. And that's one of my goals is that dance stays with them in hearts and brings happiness. It's one of the things that I really hope that the work that we're all doing as dance educators is impacting students in a way that they feel more connected to other humans. You've just seen through the eyes of public school students and their teachers just how deeply dance education has touched their lives. But the fact is, not all of our children in public schools have those opportunities. How greatly enriched our culture and communities would be if they did. I'm Paula Zahn. Thank you for joining us in celebrating the promise of dance in our public schools. Hello again, thank you so much for watching our film PS Dance. My name is Nell Shelby and I directed the film. I wanted to pop in here as the credits are rolling just to remind you to stick around. We have a very special talk back after this film. We're going to answer all your questions and take your comments. So I will inter introduce our panelists coming up very soon. Just watch the credits roll so you can see everyone involved in this film and then we'll see you in just a moment. And if you, um, if you have to run, I just want to remind you to sign up for our newsletter. Go to psdancenyc.com. You also can like the Dance Ed Lab Facebook page where you are watching the film right now. And so you can see all that's happening in the dance education world. So again, thank you so much for being here and I'll see you soon. But I love to be able to come here, change, and come and just dance. One. Hi everyone, my name is Nell Shelby and um, I was the director of this film PS Dance and we're so happy that you're here. We're, we're all over here watching the film probably for the millionth time and also getting so excited and choked up as well and um, just feeling your energy on Facebook and seeing all those comments has just been really wonderful and great during this time. Um, I wanted to start out by um, 
doing some brief introductions because the people that I have here today are some very special people and some really important people um, in the dance education world and really in the dance world in general. And um, so I'm going to introduce everyone. And then we, I'm gonna ask one question, but we do seem to have some questions from, from Facebook. So we'll go to that and then, um, and then we'll go from there. And we have about um, 30 minutes with each other to talk. And so please feel free to write your questions in the chat and we hopefully will get to everyone's question. Um, I also wanted to just um, remind you that you can share this, um, this link from Facebook for people that didn't get to see it. And you also can watch the film on 13.org if you search for PS Dance and that's a way to get to it. Um, and I'll tell you at the end of this chat as well and remind you. So I first want to introduce um, Jody Gottfried Arnhold. And Jody, if you can just raise your hand. Um, and Jody is the exec executive producer of PS Dance. Jody taught in the New York City Public Schools for 25 years. She is a dance educator and advocate and also is the founder of the Dance Education Laboratory at the 92nd Street Y. So thank you, Jody, so much for being here. She is really the backbone behind all of this. Um, Aaron Lally, Aaron, if you can, thank you. Aaron has been a dance educator for almost 20 years. She's a graduate of Dell. We say Dell, for those of you who don't know the Dance Education Laboratory, we refer to it a lot as Dell. Um, she is a graduate of the Dell program and currently is the director of the Dance Education Laboratory. Thank you for being here as well. This is Anna Neri Fragoso. Anna can wave. Okay. <laughs> She's been a dance educator for over 20 years. She's a graduate of Dell and began with Dell 25 years ago when Dell began. Currently, Anna is the director of dance at the Department of Education here in New York City. And Anna is also one of the teachers in PS Dance. So you probably would yes. recognize her if you watched the entire film. Um, and then we have Joan Finkelstein here. Joan is a former professional dancer. From 2004 to 2014, she was the director of dance at the Department of Education in New York City, right before Anna. And Joan served as the educational consultant for PS Dance, and you would have, you probably saw her in the film as well. Um, and Joan is also the executive director of the Harkness Foundation for Dance. So, so happy to have you all here. It seems like everyone was so happy to see this film again, and it brought a lot of joy to everyone to see this, um, especially during this time. And I think people are longing to dance with each other in the studio after watching this. So I'm gonna start out with one question and I really wanna open it up to all of you. Um, why did we decide, why did you all decide to show this film during this time? Why is this important to see this film right now? And whoever, whoever wants to begin. We're in, a, we're in an unprecedented time. Uh, we're in the middle of a pandemic. People are suffering. You all know, you all know what's going on. You're, you're in the middle of it, you're living it. We can't let, we can't forget about our children. We can't forget about our children in schools. We can't forget about what they are gonna be coming back to. We can't forget about what they are experiencing right now. PS Dance shows kind of a high watermark of dance education, although we have continued to rise and we are continuing to rise, even in the face of this pandemic, we're changing because that's what the artists do, that's what dance dancers do, that's what dance educators do. We are learning and changing at this time. All the dance education has gone virtual, online. And it's magnificent. It's magnificent in that it joins the art of dance, technology, it, enjo it, it joins creativity and technology, and it's amazing the work that's gone on. We're learning so much and we can't go back. We're not going back. We're gonna be different. When we come back to, to, our, to our classrooms, we're gonna be different. We're gonna be better. We're gonna be stronger. So, you know, dance educators are my heroes through this. They are really my heroes and they're gonna take us forward there's a lot of advocacy going on 
we're all dance advocates. Everybody in this film, master teachers, you saw master teachers. Everybody in this film is teaching, still teaching, or still involved in the advocacy effort. The advocacy effort, uh, I, I want to draw your attention to uh, Dance NYC, which has a, a, a campaign, artists, hashtag, artists are necessary workers, and dance educators are, are those artists who are necessary workers. And there's an army of them. You heard almost 500 now. And the Arts and Education Roundtable has a petition petitioning the city council. As you know, there are terrible budget cuts to the Department of Education. It's, it's not good, but the arts are essential and the arts cannot be cut disproportionately. So join the art. come out of this and going into the future, what will, edu what will education be? Well, arts is at the table. Mm -hmm. Arts are essential. Dance education is essential. You've seen it in this movie. Yes, definitely. Oh, good, Anna's back. I was gonna say, you know, you know we're, we're dealing with technology as we all, as Jody even was just talking about and Anna left for a second and now she's back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back, yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Jody. And also, I just wanted to remind everyone, I, I'm not looking directly at Facebook, but I know that our team is putting in the link to the roundtable that you were mentioning. And um, there will also be a talk after this that people can go to. But that's all that information is there if, if you need that. So um, did I anyone else want to say anything else? Yeah, no, I just I just wanted to jump on something that Jody said, and and that is that this film represents what Jody called a high watermark uh, of dance education. Well, what that really means is that we worked so hard for so long to get to the point where we can offer dance education during the school day in a sequential fashion as essentially core curriculum, somebody on the, on the Facebook chat called it core, C-O-R-P-S curriculum, which I liked very much. So we're really looking at sequential dance education offered as part of children's education, not an afterthought, not just an after school program, though those are good, uh, not a you know one shot exposure, but a key integrated part of children's education. That's what we want to get back to. Now, as Jody mentioned, it may look different. We've learned a lot already about the use of technology. That's great. It's in the blueprint. Let's, let's connect with technology and use it. And, and dancers are so innovative that way. Um, but we, you know, we wanted to show the film to reignite the passion that this period has put such stress on uh, for teachers and, and to you know, get that fire burning again so that we can be strong in our advocacy. Yeah. Yes, and I also would like to add that PS Dance shows five model programs that took a long time and effort to develop. We want to make sure that going forward, we keep these ideals present in our teaching and we continue to work um, this way for many, many years, we need to ensure high quality dance education in our programs while practicing social distancing and distance learning. These are the ideas. We need to make sure that we keep them mm -hmm. moving forward. Great. Well, we actually have a lot of questions. So um, if you, if you, unless there's anything else and, and you all just feel free to jump in if there's something that you think about, um, let's see. Let's see, I um, just had them right in front of me. Well, we do have a raffle winner, which I'll, I will um, announce shortly, but 
Um, let's see, what do you think is the biggest barrier to people's perception that dance is on the same level of other art discipline disciplines? Uh, no, dance is first. <laughs> Bob, so be it. Dance is first. When we list the arts in the schools, we list dance, theater, music, and art. That's the way we feel. <laughs> you know, I think I think that uh, the people who feel that way think of dance as learning routines, as mimicry. Show them this film. Mm -hmm. It's clear that, <laughs> that it goes way beyond that, that this is deep education that connects with every part of the child's uh, physical, aesthetic, cognitive um, understanding of the world and can have a lasting impact in terms of how they function in the world. So I think, um, I think this film is a piece of advocacy in and of itself for those people who don't actually understand what dance education entails. Mm. Does anyone and that's, yeah, and that's why we have to educate people. We have to share the film. We have to talk to everyone that we know, everybody, parties, meetings, uh, PTA meetings, any, anywhere. We have to show that this is what dance education looks like. We have to educate everybody on what dance education is. I think that's the biggest thing that I've noticed from this making this film with you all is that once you show it, and Jody, you say this all the time, once you show it, then people, I don't know if you say it exactly this way, but once you show it, then people get it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're just trying to talk to people about it, sometimes they don't really understand, but then once people see this film, they really understand. So another thing people can do is even just show the trailer. The trailer of this film, which we could put the link in the comments is very short. If people don't have 53 minutes to sit down, they can watch that. So um, let's see, we have another question here. Um, it says, yes, they say yes to Anna. We need more administrators, principals and superintendent, superintendents to be focused and include arts in their schools to, yes, and include arts in their schools and districts. What about a dance workshop for them? Um, we do have actually, uh, we have the Schuber leadership series, which are uh, three to four workshops throughout the year from the Office of Arts and Special Projects. And we invite principals, assistant principals to come to these workshops. Um, we talk about what arts instruction looks like in our, in, our, in our studios. We talked about what the last requests from the Department of Education are for our teachers and what we show them what they look like in each one of the art forms. When they come to me, we do a warm up, we move, we do dance tasks, we go through the Lava Movement Analysis chart, um, we observe video clips of dance educators um, uh, doing instruction, and we deconstruct those, those, uh, those, uh, those lessons, and we look for ways to support the dance educators in a positive and constructive way. Mm. Now, I have to say that most of the principals and assistant principals who actually attend these workshops are administrators who already know, who already understand what this these instruction is about. It's very, very difficult to convince those who are still not or we, who don't still under, yet understand the value of arts education, those administrators to come and visit us and take these workshops. It's a challenge. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll jump in because uh, I also led those workshops for 10 years and um, there are some who come who, you know, who, who you know, who maybe understand that arts education is probably valuable, but who think that they can't fit it into their school schedule. And of those, sometimes this kind of experience that Anna is describing 
that is a turnaround moment for them. Mm -hmm. And we have, I know Anna has, and I did, uh, we have gotten phone calls from those principals who said, you know, I think I want to explore what kind of dance education I could put in my building. I may not be able to hire a full-time teacher yet. What can I do? Can you come to my school? And so this embodied experience that Anna has described is as potent for adults as it is for children. Mm -hmm. So if where, wherever you are, uh, you know, if you're not in New York and you don't have access to the Schubert Leadership Institutes, I would, I would, you know, suggest that you contact Anna for some guidance and proactively lead those workshops yourself in your district. Yes, absolutely. And one of the things I've been doing for the last few years is to have a big box of PS Dance DVDs to give to each one of them. So they can, I can talk about the movie, I can explain what this is about, and then they can go home and watch it. Very, very important. It's some, this movie is an eye for many illustrators. Mm -hmm, definitely. I'm going to, that's great. And there's also, again, just to remind people that you can go to psdancenyc.com. Um, there's contact information on there to connect with all of us and we'll get you to Anna. <laughs> um, so you can touch base with her. But I wanted to go to you, Erin. There's a question here that says, um, how is Dell addressing the immediate teaching of dance online and are teachers sharing their trials and tribulations? And can you share yeah. some of these stories? Yeah, absolutely. And um, I work very closely, Dell works very closely with Anna and the DOE. Um, and so we are sharing best practices together. Um, and Anna actually might be able to answer how the teachers are accessing and in real time with um, integrating lessons through Google Classroom asynchronously and also through um, live virtual meets um, and teaching live. Um, and then from the professional development side of Dell, we are pivoting as well to a digital space to continue to serve high quality professional learning opportunities for dance educators and classroom teachers um, who seek to continue their learning and improve their practice. Um, and so just a couple of weeks ago, um, Dell had our first professional learning workshop online um, in hip hop and it was incredibly successful. Um, very different from being in the studio, but we had embodied experiences um, through Zoom we had um, 45 participants from all over the country um, mm -hmm. and we were able to reach these dance educators. Um, and we partner with the DOE um, through a specific program called uh, 3K and Pre-K Create. And um, we work with these Pre-K and 3K educators, mm -hmm. coaching them through how to incorporate dance into their curriculum. So we're doing that now, we're giving resources for classroom teachers to continue dance instruction and integration into their curriculum. That, that's great. I mean, it's it's really in a way, because before people, if they wanted to do your hip hop to the top workshop, they had to come to New York City, to the 92nd Street Y and take it. And now you were able to touch people all over the country and maybe the world. Is that, mm -hmm. yeah. It's correct. And this summer, um, we're going to hold our um, renowned Summer Institute um, virtually as well. So we're going to have, um, starting off with our Dell Fundamentals, which, you know, goes over all those key components and all of that information and course content um, can be found at thedanceedlab.com. Great. Thank you for saying that. Um, let's see. We have so many questions. Um, it's very exciting. Um, Let's see, um, right here, we're gonna say, um, how are New York City dance educators approaching, well, this is sort of what we were just talking about with Dell, but how are New York City dance educators approaching remote learning in the final weeks of school? Um, and then I'll just say this other question. It says, I'm curious to know what questions principals typically ask when teachers and families advocate to bring dance into a school what should we be prepared to answer? So those really are two pretty separate questions. So maybe we yes. start with the, 
how you're approaching I, remote learning. I can talk a little bit about um, the first question. Since moving temporarily to remote learning, we have learned a lot, a lot about online, like teaching dance online. Our New York City Department of Education dance educators are currently providing dance instruction using online platforms such as Google Classroom, Zoom, Google Meet, Flipgrid, everything you can think of. Um, we are learning how to teach dance in new ways. Some of our teachers are very savvy in their use of technology, but others, you know, for others, this transition has been very, very challenging. And it has um, brought a lot of, you know, stress and anxiety, but they're all stepping up. They're all, you know, taking time to, to learn and to develop. It is very important, I must say, that we document our successes around remote instruction so we can share with administrators and with each other our discoveries and innovations. Yeah. It is the only way to grow as a community. My hope is that by the time we get back to teaching at our schools, this experience, we have made us stronger dance educators, mm -hmm. dance teachers of the 21st century. That's my dream. Oh my God, that gave me the chills, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> It's really true. Yeah, we need um, each other more than ever, more than ever. You know, we are facing challenges, even bigger challenges that we just faced for the last couple of months. And we really need to stick together. We need to share resources. We need to share instructional materials. We need to share ideas um, so we can grow as a community. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you've even shown me a few little videos. I get to see a few snippets of what some some students are doing in their homes and some um, dance that they're making. And I mean, just the one where I told you, hopefully some people will see it in the next few weeks, but where that one student was just in his living room, just making a beautiful dance and expressing himself and it's, it's really beautiful to see. And it's so, so interesting to see them in their homes, you know, I and mean, that's, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so we, you know, we are continuing figuring out ways to advocate. And I really believe that the best way that we can advocate is by showing the amazing work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. What is that? Is, you know, images, images of us teaching remotely, images of our students dancing at home, dancing with their families, a, 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 a student teaching a sibling a, a dance combination or a warm up. We need to record we need to document mm -hmm. document evidence we have to make sure that we collect as much evidence so we can really show everyone outside of our community what we are doing what our students are doing it's really truly amazing yeah and that's what's so beautiful about being able to record on zoom and all these other places as well and because it's just like watching ps dance once people see it then they really understand what's happening did you want to say something, Erin? I didn't, I didn't know if you want to, okay. Um, so I think the next question is really important. Um, and any of you can answer this, but I'm curious to know what questions principals typically ask when teachers and families advocate to bring dance into a school. What should we be prepared to answer? Do, do any of you want to answer that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I understand. Okay, so I think so. With the, I can explain. So I think with what they're asking is, if they want to advocate to have dance in their school, what should they be ready to say to the principal or the teacher or the administrator in that school? What I mean, do they just show them this film? Do they are there are there specific maybe things that they could say to this principal of why it's important to have dance in their school? I believe that's what the question is. Yeah, I think. Um... Uh, maybe this is your uh, uh, your domain, Erin. But um, but the Dell website has some really great pointers about why dance education, right? So um, I think there are a lot of resources there that you could access and uh, that can help to frame uh, your elevator speech, so to say, so to speak. Also, I believe, and Jody, please correct me if I'm wrong. But I believe we created a, a couple of years ago a document of 10 tips of how to bring dance to your school. And I right. believe it's uploaded into the P PS Dance uh, website. Okay. 
Great. Well, I think maybe um, if someone, maybe Taryn or Amy Page could share that that link um, on Facebook. Yes, absolutely. And if that link is not there, I can absolutely share the document. And, um, and maybe we can post it in the um, Dell uh, Facebook website. Mm -hmm. That would be great. That said, you know, showing even a trailer of this film or at best the whole film um, is, to, you know, to back that up is also very effective. As you know, um, pictures worth a thousand words, right? Mm -hmm. So when you introduce these ideas, to show them in action is very powerful. And I, and I want to remind everyone that that was the main reason why this film was made. Mm -hmm. Because we really wanted to make sure that we have a piece, something that would really, really, really explain the value of dance education to everyone who is not familiar with it. The film is a kind of evidence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what principals are always asking for. What's the evidence? that this is effective. Well, watch yeah. those kids, listen to what they say. And that's why it's also very important that we collect evidence of the work that we're doing right now during distance learning, because it's the only way we're gonna be able to advocate for our students, for our dance programs, by showing evidence of instruction, high quality instruction. Yeah, definitely. Um, I want to get, I know, Anna, you have um, another talk to go to. I, maybe do you have a few more minutes with us? And then... I actually, thank you for reminding me. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to remind you that you have another talk. And um, it is with Dance NYC, who also is a huge advocate that jo Jody works with them very closely. Well, all of, all of you all do. All of us do. But Jody really works very closely with them um, and on advocating for dance education. And um, they have a talk right now, well, coming up at 5.30 with you. Yes. So I need to like run. Would you like uh, to go now? We have a few more questions, but um, if you need I, to go, that's fine. And I bet everyone else can answer them. Yes, it's beginning in like three minutes. I have to be there. But, okay. but I would like to thank everyone for joining us today. You know, you are part of our team. We need you. We need everyone. So please stay with us. And... You know, my email is everywhere on the web. <laughs> you can always reach me. And um, I'll be more than happy to join forces with all of you. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, And Anna. join us at Dancing We See in like Yes, and that minutes. link will be in the Facebook comments. So if you want to just keep your evening or late afternoon going with dance education, you can then go to Dance NYC. So if the rest of you could stay for just a little bit longer. Um, but bye, Anna. We'll see you later. Um, so one other question I have is, um, how do you build an environment where students support each other? Which I think is a great question. Ha -ha. Day after day after day, <laughs> you show up with passion and commitment and you turn yourself into a change agent mm. for each student, for their class, for their school, for their community. That's what a master dance educator does. That's what each one of those people that you just saw, those five people, um, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. And each one of those teachers also is modeling through his or her own behavior, the kinds of behaviors that are expected of students. And so the, the dance teacher is not only uh, a shaper and purveyor of knowledge, um, but also embodies, embodies the qualities that we want children to develop. And it takes time. It takes a lot of time and consistency and building that community of trust, empowering children, um, incorporating their voice um, and creating community agreements. And these are strategies um, that are sound in practice and Dell helps support dance educators. First and second years are super, super challenging for any teacher, including dance educators. Um, we're here for you um, and we're here to help you develop strategies. What Erin is talking about 
is what Paolo Freire or Bell Hooks would call a dialogic classroom, where dialogue, true dialogue between teachers and students, opportunities for students to have dialogues with other students, and real recognition of everybody's voice is what sets the tone for learning. Mm -hmm. Well, I will tell you that I, over the many years, I guess I started filming Dell in 2011 when Jody asked me and then made this film. And the dance education community is the most supportive community of smart people that I just have just help each other and are always willing and are really an amazing group of people. So it's like you have a great support network um, because it is tough to teach in these New York City public schools. I have not done it, but I've witnessed it and um, and it's schools all over the country, really. So um, let's see, I think that we, um, maybe we can answer the additional questions on Facebook. Um, there is there there's some more questions about remote learning, um, but I do want to make sure that people know what to do. You know, our you know that's important. Is this is a wonderful film? We've had a nice talk, but we also want things to happen. So, um, can you all just maybe reiterate what you all feel that um, are some some action steps that people can take in order to get more dance in our schools and to our children? I hope all these links are posted to the uh, artist hashtag artisan necessary workers to the arts education uh, arts education roundtable petition um, that's going to go to the city council. To uh, Anna just ran off to a, a town meeting that Dance NYC is holding for dance educators or about dance educators who are part of the, commu the community of, of uh, dance artists. Um, are all those links being posted? All those links, all those links are being posted there. Like you said, there's the petition to sign. There's testimonials um, that can be sent in as well. So all those links are there in Facebook um, that people can go to. Um, and then always a reminder to send this film. This film can be seen <laughs> in so many different ways. Like I said at the beginning, it's on 13.org. If you search PS Dance, if you, you know, easy to remember 13.org, just search PS Dance, the film will pop up. The film is gonna stay here on Facebook. Um, you can rent it on Vimeo if you <laughs> wanna do it there. There's, um, the trailer is on YouTube. So there's many ways that people can go to this. Um, I do want to, maybe you all have one other thing to say, but I do wanna make sure that we announce that Mary McCaddy of Dancing Classrooms was the raffle winner. And this is for a free enrollment to the online course this summer with Dell. And so Mary, if you are watching this um, still, and you're still here with us, we will reach out to you and make sure that you will be connected with Aaron. Um, so you can do Dell. Yeah. Um, is there anything else that you all wanna close with um, to send us away with? We're just all so thankful for the dance educator community. I know you're all out there. We all know you're all out there. We're all in this together. As Anna said, we need each other more than ever in this time when we're facing so many challenges, um, not only to our teaching, but to our very livelihoods and, uh, and to our health and well being and our children's health and well being. So, Community uh, is, the dance education community is strong and we're so thrilled that we're able to participate in it with you. Thanks, Joan. Yeah. Did you want to say something, Erin? Just echoing what Joan said that Dell has been a catalyst for this great work um, and we strive to help shape and support the next generation of dance educators in New York City and beyond because um, you're the future leaders. And so um, we're here for you. Jody, do you want to send us off with some wise Jody words? Uh, <laughs> I, I just love this work. It's uh, you know a, a great field. If you're a 
young dancer, find out more about it. Join us. We need everybody to, this is the grass, dance education is the grassroots effort for our own. And we need everybody on board for our youngest artists, the children in schools, the children and teens in schools. And we, we our work shapes them and has a lasting influence no matter what they do. And, you know, they may be the next Alvin Ailey or the next Paul Taylor or the next Andrea Miller, but they're all gonna be better citizens because of their work in and with dance. And it's really, dance education really is nothing less than educating for democracy. Mm. And that's where I'd like to end. Right. Mm, I agree. So right. I wanna remind you again to go to, um, it's better to just end with Jody's words, but I still wanna remind you with, to go to psdancenyc.com. You can join the newsletter. You can also go to danceedlab.com. Am I right, Jody or Aaron? Is that okay? And you can join the newsletter there as well and, and like the Facebook page if you haven't already so you can stay in touch with us. And I also wanna tell you that there is another PS Dance film in the works, PS Dance, The Next Generation that is being worked on currently right now and it will be out soon, I promise. And um, so we have more of this work to share with you all. Um, and so we can continue to advocate for this really important art form um, for our children. So thank you all so much for joining us today. And I'm so happy we got to do this and have a wonderful evening. And if you need to go onto the town hall, please go um, and see everybody later. Thank you. Bye-bye.